clownfish get their names from the bold white markings on their face, like a clown's face paint. But what else makes them funny peculiar? Here are the top 10 reasons, including some very comical grunting noises. <laughs> First off, there's many different species, and they're all brightly coloured. So Nemo is not the only one. You'll find them from all over the tropical seas, except in the Atlantic, where there's something else funny going on. They're all born male, like Nemo, but only later do some of the big ones develop into females? Anemones have stinging cells like their nearest relatives, the jellyfish. Clownfish immune to their stings get protection from them. There's lots of different kinds of anemones worldwide. But clownfish are quite picky about which ones they choose. Generally, they seem to be the bigger, flatter ones, with more tentacles, so the clownfish can get amongst them and get protection. Clownfish are not the only animal on the reef to partner with another creature for safety. Damselfishes often hide in coral heads. These striking cardinal fish also know they're onto a good thing, hiding near a cloak of tentacles. And clownfish are not the only animals to take safety in anemones. Shrimps. And even little crabs do. Like most fish, clownfish are covered in mucus but their layer is four times thicker than that found in other fish. It's thought to be protection against the deadly stinging cells of anemones that look like this under the microscope. But how it works exactly is still a mystery. First time buyers can have a difficult time finding a home. And it's no different for young clownfish who have to find an anemone home that isn't already taken. And when they do settle down, particularly in social species like this, they start at the bottom of the social ladder and have to put up with being harassed and bullied. They might even get chucked out of their new anemone home, which is a death sentence because they just get eaten outside its protection. Clownfish and anemones make a perfect couple. Clownfish brings the food to the anemone, and the anemone gives protection. But it's recently been found that clownfish also help anemones breathe at night. They're quite active throughout the night, and it's thought their flapping fins and the way they separate the anemone's fronds helps it to get oxygen. Anemones can shut unpredictably at different times of day, either because they're digesting food or because the tide is too strong. This can mean that a clownfish gets locked out, and it's certainly a dangerous time for it as its home starts to shut. Okay, this one's a bit horrific. Clownfish are susceptible to a terrible parasite a bit like a nasty underwater woodlouse that goes inside its mouth and cuts off its tongue. The greedy little amphipod, as it's called, now becomes its new tongue, presumably taking a free meal every time the clownfish eats. These tongue biters are also found in other fish, but they're often seen in the clownfish. <laughs> Finally, did you know that clownfish sing? Well, not with much of a melody. They grunt, click, pop, 
and chirp. Here's one grunting at me as I approach a large saddleback clownfish colony in Indonesia. It's defending its large family and its vital an enemy. But there are also softer, submissive calls that are used by small clownfish in the family to try and avoid bullying. So there's a lot that's funny about this beautiful, mucus-covered, sex-changing, home-loving, singing, clown-painted fish. And if you've enjoyed this clip, please subscribe, and there'll be some more saltwater stories coming very soon.